Good morning. What a beautiful day. Today, we're making another Taylor Swift look. This is the glittery t-shirt dress that she wears during, I think she wears it during like, anti-hero performances on tour so far. So I saw it and I was like, oh, I think this is quite like easy to make. And I'm trying to have a range of more expensive custom work on my website, but also things that are like Taylor Swift that are a little bit cheaper. And I'm sure there'll be like cheap alternatives for people to find online, but I'm gonna give it a go. So this is my plan of the day. This is the fabric I found. Now I know hers is a lot lighter, but I love this fabric because it's like it shines like blue, green, and black in different lights. The light that's shining from the top is definitely blue, and if you look from the bottom, it like looks black from some angles. I don't know. I think it's really, really fun, and I have a photo shoot in five days, so I really need to get on making it. So let's do it. I'm so excited. I don't think I ever really show my process of pattern making. It is, I don't want to use the word complicated because I don't want people to think that it's like inaccessible for them, but there's a lot of layers of knowledge and information that you need to have to get to like a good pattern making level where you can make pretty much anything. It is hard to kind of explain very simply, but I want to do my best. So you have this thing called slopers, which are the basic shapes of your body. This is a bodice. This is the back. This is the front and it has a dart here and a dart here. When you go to fashion school, typically they teach you how to make this from like specific measurements. So they'll like draw a line here that's this high and then draw a line here that's this wide and then connect it here and whatever. So this is very basic. I'm sure different schools and different places do it very differently, but I don't think it's very hard to find them online. So if you're trying to like figure out pattern making yourself, go find yourself a good set of bodice and trouser and skirt blocks. I think Natalia has them on her website. I think you can buy them or she shows you how to make them. Either way, it looks complicated, easy. So I've got the trouser version. Obviously they call them pants because I went to a school in the US. The bag has two darts in the back, game changer. What you did then do from these bodice blocks is that you start to manipulate them. So you can like, close this dart and open it, the dart to make it bigger here, add a dart here to close this dart, and you can move around where you want the volume to be coming from. You can make it longer, wider, taller, whatever. And that's what pattern making is. You have like a block and you like alter it. And it's called flat pattern making because you're just doing on the table flat. We have this thing called draping, which is when you use this dress form to make your patterns. I personally love draping because I can see exactly how, how things look, but people use different techniques for different projects. One of the homeworks that we had in school was the dartless t-shirt sloper, which kind of takes out all the darts and makes it like a nice fitting t-shirt. I want it to be more than a nice fitting t-shirt. One, I want it to be a dress and two, Something that I always, always mess up with is when you have your sleeve that is too tight to the bodice, when you lift your sleeve up in the air, this whole thing rises, which is fine if you're wearing a sweatshirt. It's not fine if you're wearing a dress. And I've made dresses before where like the top fits perfectly. It's cute. It's kind of short, not that big of a deal. And then I raise my arms and everyone can see everything which is not ideal especially if you're sending people to a concert with it because people are going to be like jumping up and down and raising their arms so i just have to make sure that, that there's enough of volume and fabric underneath like right here that when i do lift it it's like pulling from the excess fabric and not pulling the entire dress up that is something i want to be very very careful with and then here's my sleeve sloper so let's get to it <laughs> It really is just me eyeballing, like thinking, okay, like I want the shoulders to be a little bit wide, I want the dress to be a little bit longer, I want this to be a little bit this way. And all of that, like, kind of knowledge and thinking really only comes with practice. But once, once you do kind of get a good grasp of how you know the way that things are going to impact the silhouette of things, then it gets really, really easy. Um, and I will do a muslin and I will get a bunch of things wrong. That's inevitable. But when you like, know all these things, it does quicken the process a lot more. I'm going to make the rest of the patterns and I will cut out the first muslin. Hopefully, I'm just only one needed. And I'll see you then. Even though you wouldn't do the same. So cute, guys. So cute. It's important to note I will not have this issue because the other fabric is stretchy. Oh, 
I will lower the neckline significantly. Apart from the fact that it looks like a sack of potatoes, let's let's see what's happening here, okay? This is the part where it's like the ugliest, everyone's really confused, not really cute, but it really comes together when you make the changes I'm about to make. So, shape-wise, I think it should come in a lot more. I like how wide it is. I like the length in general. Like the length in the back, I think it's quite good. I like the droop shoulder because I think that's what she has as well. So basically, all I need to do is take this in by like a good inch and it will resemble more of like a t-shirt dress that I'm going for. Right, so changes to make, lower the neckline. I'm gonna now add the sleeves. I think I'm happy with the armhole. I'm going to take it the sides in by an inch. I'm gonna do that right now. And then fix whatever hem situation is going on because for some reason the front is longer than the back. I'm gonna make the changes to this little muslin and then I will meet you back here. Is this fun? This is, I'm having such a good time. All right, some changes have been made. A sleeve has been added. I know it doesn't look like what you think it's meant to look like, but I think I know what's happening. Obviously, this looks bad, but with the sleeve, you get where I'm coming from, I hope. She has a drop shoulder, so that's what I wanted to do. So the seam is actually like, my shoulder's like here and the seam is like a little bit lower. Obviously, I want the sleeve to be, to be fair, hers come like quite close to the elbow, I think. So something like this, I think it's fine. I like the, the way that the fabric goes in. I think I can take in a little bit more. Yeah, I think I'm taking like an inch on both sides, but I think I can take in like another maybe half an inch on, half an inch on each side. The length is a bit short. Maybe if the final thing is like this, I would add, need to add like another half an inch. But I like the length in the back, actually. The only thing is, like I was saying earlier, when I raise my arms, the whole thing comes up. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add an inch of fabric from the body, like above the armhole, to have more fabric, and an additional inch on the sleeve side as well, so there's just more fabric. So when I lift it up, it doesn't just lift up the whole thing, it'll lift more of that fabric. What I am really, really proud of is that like, I kind of freehanded the sleeve, like I copied the sloper like I do. So it's like this original line is the original sloper and I lifted it up by an inch here and then took it up by another half inch. Um, and it fit the sleeve of the bodice and the, of the front and the back perfectly. And I'm very proud of that. It's one of those like once you kind of get used to it, you know exactly where you have to maneuver the fabric and the pattern and everything to make it fit really well. And it's it's nice to have these little moments where I'm like, oh, I'm actually getting really good at pattern making because I'm like noticing these little bits where things are smoother and I'm getting things a lot more accurately without really having to think about much. Very happy about that. Gonna see how much I want to shorten the sleeve. I think I'm gonna make these changes and I'm gonna cut out the main fabric. How fun. Let's get to it. <laughs> Hello! Sleeves are cut, the body is cut and ready to sew. Here is the neckband. I'm just gonna kind of measure how much it needs. It's like very stretchy. So I think I'm just gonna make it like maybe like an inch smaller than the actual neck just because if you make it the exact same size, it will just kind of like stand. And if you make it a little bit smaller, it'll kind of like cinch everything and it fall very nicely on your neck. I've made pieces where like the neck band stands and it's very ugly. I am using my serger because it's a stretchy fabric and I want things to stay stretchy, but that means that it's very loud. So I'm not gonna film anything. I will get back to you with an update. Hello. Okay, this is what we have. I forgot to take something into consideration, which is the fact that I was sewing with a half an inch seam allowance on my sewing machine for my muslin, but I'm using like a quarter of an inch seam allowance for the serger. So this is what we have. It, it's giving t-shirt dress. I think that's when I was like taking it in. I just find this curve very intense and I was very hesitant on like taking more and so I was a bit generous with that but I don't think I like the result of it. So I'm just gonna take this in a little bit more. But in terms of like a t-shirt dress, I think it's fun. I like the length. I think this is the length that I like. Yes, this is good. This is the length we're going for. Yeah, it's like a good inch and a half that I need to take off. I'm starting to think I put too much volume in the middle. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Let me hem the sleeves in the final thing. Take a little bit into the middle and see how I feel. Because oftentimes I'm like, oh, I regret this. It looks awful. I can't believe I did this this way. And then like I put it back on like a day later and I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm really just being dramatic. Also, this is what the neckline looks like. Catch you in a second. I have glitter all over my face. Okay. This is what we have. I think she's very cute. It's very much giving t-shirt dress. Very cute. I like it. 
I took it in a little bit, but it's creating a lot of this like puckering because I haven't cut the excess yet. But I'm scared because I don't really know how I feel about the shape of it yet. And if you're a creative person like me and you've been working on something for like a couple of hours, because I've been doing this since uh, like 8.30. I've been working it for four hours and you've been like, ooh, I don't love it as much as I would or, or I don't know how I feel about it. Take a couple of hours off. It's what I always do and I always come back and I'm like, oh, this is really not as bad as I thought it was. I think when you're working on something for like hours and hours and hours and you kind of have an image of what it is going to be in your head and it doesn't match that exactly your mind automatically goes oh it's bad it's not it's fine i think this is cute i think this is perfect i might not like love it in the moment but i know that like in a couple of hours i'm gonna come back and be like i love it so cute that is that i've got a photo shoot this saturday for this dress so i will see you then also isn't she so cute <laughs> okay